continuing with the same penny example, remember that we just said the mean, which was the center, is 12.2. The spread, which is the standard error, which is sigma sub x bar, which is 1.56533 or 9.9 .9 over the square root of 40. Of course, the one with the square root in it is more accurate because it's not rounded, but nevertheless, they both should be okay. Just keep um, several decimal places over here and you should be fine. All right, so first part is they want us to find, well, there's a capital P in there with some parentheses. Now, capital P with parentheses means probability. We learned that in chapter five. So we want to know, we want to find probability. We already know x bar, as a matter of fact, two of them, because they gave us x bar of 10 and x bar of 14. So we want to use normal CDF. This is where we're going to go. So let's shade this graph and figure everything out. So remember, the center line right here is mu sub x bar, which is 12.2. As a matter of fact, I can actually draw that on every single one of the graphs on this particular page because it's the same for all of them. The center line never changes unless you're on a different problem altogether, which we are not. All right, now 10 and 14. Remember that one standard deviation of the sampling distribution is 1.5. So if you take 12 and you take away 1.5, you're at 10.5, and we want to go to 10. So we're obviously past one standard deviation, which would be about there. So 10 is going to be over here somewhere. So there's an x bar, which is 10. 14 is eh, also a little bit past standard deviation, maybe. Kind of over here. So there's x bar, which is 14. And we want to know the probability that x is between the two. Right? See how the x is between them on, right? It's greater than 10, but less than 14 simultaneously. So we're looking for this region right in here. OK, so we just looked at the decision matrix, and it said use normal CDF. Lower, which is 10. Upper, which is 14. The center, which is 12.2, that's the mu sub x bar. And the spread is 9.9 .9 over the square root of 40. Or if you prefer, you can use 1.56533. If you're going to use decimals, just make sure you use like five or six decimal places. Because we want four decimal places for normal CDF. So we don't want to lose accuracy. Okay, so let me go to second distribution. Number two, normal CDF, 10, 14. Then we want 12.2. And I'm actually going to type in 9.9 .9 divide second square root 40. Close parentheses and go down to paste. And I pasted it in, so I press enter, and there you have it. So that area that I've shaded is 0.79. Ooh, 79496. So that's 7950 if it rounds. If you use the decimal, it should be very similar. I can go grab it. I'm just going to move that over. So if I go up here and grab that same thing, if you use the decimal rather than the square root, you should still be okay. It'll be 1.56533 in here. And you can see 79496 still works out, and then it starts losing accuracy after that. Now, if I'm in stat crunch, let's see here. I want a between, so I'm going to click on between. I know my mean is 12.2, and then I'm going to have to use the decimal. So you have to on stat crunch. So 1.56533. And then I want 10 here, and I want 14 here. And I can either press enter or click compute. And there you have it. 79496 looks very familiar. Okay, so that's done. Now, there is a 20% chance the mean of 40 random pennies will be at or below, ooh, 20% chance. So I'm giving you a probability, right? I'm giving you the area, and it's 20% right here. And it's going to be at or below a specific value. So I'm looking for a value. Well, 20% is going to be, I don't know, somewhere in here. So I'm looking for this x bar. But I know that this area over here should be worth 20%. Okay. That area. So there's a 20% chance of being at or below what 
value? What mean H? Right? They're kind of telling you, you know, they want an X bar. <laughs> okay, so let's think about this. Let's go back to the matrix. Unfortunately, not the one with Keanu Reeves. <laughs> All right, so I want to find an X bar. I know a percent, right? That's another, another big clue. I already know the percent is 20%. So it's going to have to be inverse norm. So inverse norm. I want the left tail area, which is that 0 0.20 business. And then the mean, which is 12.2. That hasn't changed, right? And then the standard error, which again, you can either use 9.9 .9 over the square root of 40, or you can use 1.56533, which everyone makes you happy. And I don't know, I guess I'll go, I'll go calculator again. All right, so on the calculator, inverse norm, and then my area is 0.2, right, 20%. 12.2 is my mean. 9.9 .9 divide square root 40, close parentheses. And if you have a new calculator like I have here, you want to choose left. If you have an old calculator, it'll automatically be left, which will make you very happy, <laughs> right? Left is your default on the old calculators. All right, so we get 10.88. So X bar is 10.88. 8, 8, or 10.9, right? I know they said to use one decimal place, so I'll go 10.9. Nothing about what this is. This is years, right? Because these are um, x value or x bar values, so they have units. What about on StatCrunch? Well, it's not a between, so I'm going to click Standard. 12.2, 1.56, that's all good. I'm looking for the X, so I'm not going to write it in here. I'm going to write it over here. I want to be 0.2, enter. And that graph matches what I shaded, right? So that looks accurate. And it tells me it's 10.88. I like the way StatCrunch draws the graphs. It helps us verify what we're doing is correct. So that's a really nice feature. All right. Now, you have 40 pennies in your car. Oh, that's nice. Would it be unusual if they have a mean age greater than, so greater than or equal to 16? See that? Would it be unusual means we want to know the probability, right? What's the probability that we have a mean age greater than or equal to 16? Okay, so 16's over here somewhere. Hello, 16. And I want to shade this way, and I'm looking for this area. So I want to know the probability that x bar is greater than or equal to 16 in order to figure out the unusual piece. Well, if I want to find a probability, right, for unusual, I'm going to need normal CDF, lower, upper, mu, sigma, right, all that good stuff. Sigma divided by the square root of n, excuse me. So normal CDF, 16 is the lower edge. 1E99 is the upper edge. Those same notes that we learn in the chapter 7 decision matrix are still holding true here. Inverse norm can get us units. Right tail for normal CDF is 1E99. The mean is 12.2. And the standard error, it's not standard deviation, it's the standard error is 9.9 .9 over the square root of 40, or if you like, 1.56533, whichever makes you happy. All right, so I need an answer out of this. I'm going to go with StatCrunch first, actually. So 12.2 and 1.56 are fine. I want a greater than, and I want it greater than 16, enter. And I get 0 0.0076, right, because the 9 rounds that 5 up. All right. All right, so that's the probability. It's not the answer to the question, but it's the probability. If I do it in the calculator, it would be normal CDF, so let's see, 16, 1, remember that E is above your comma, so second comma, 99, 12.2, 9.9 .9 divide square root, 40, close parentheses, and again, if you prefer the decimal, feel free to type the decimal, and we get 0 0.007599, so 0076, just like we got out of stack crunch. Now, that didn't answer the question. It just got us on the way. So we've shaded our picture. We've got the probability, but we have to answer the question of would it be unusual? 
Well, unusual is less than 5%. That's our rule of thumb. So unusual is less than 5%. So would this be unusual? Oh, yeah, definitely. So yes, unusual. Because the probability that x bar is greater than 16, greater than or equal to 16, is 0 0.0076, which is less than 0 0.05. That's the key part, right? That this probability is less than 5%. OK, now this is going to lead us into chapter 10. So pay very close attention. Suppose it happens. Suppose you reach in your car <laughs> and you're among your car cushions and you do, in fact, find 40 pennies that have an average age, an X bar, right? That's what we're talking about. X bar greater than 16. Oh, I shouldn't have said greater than or equal to. Sorry, everybody. It was just greater than. I didn't even realize it. I'll fix that. So greater than 16. Greater than, greater than greater than 16. So suppose that happens to you. What are three conclusions you could draw from this? Hmm. Okay. Number one, it could be that you had a biased sample. Remember we said, oh yeah, sure, we always assume random because otherwise you've got bias, right? So maybe you're a penny collector. <laughs> maybe um, your math instructor broke into your car and dumped a whole bunch of pennies in there. So this would happen to you, right? So maybe you're a hoarder, a penny collector, all those funny things that you're thinking of, right? So a penny collector, you know, maybe your parents, you know, really wanted to pay you your salary and penny or your, um, in not inheritance, your um, a weekly allowance. There we go. <laughs> pay your allowance and pennies, you know, whatever. Maybe you're a hoarder, etc. All of those things, that's a biased sample. You're not, and your car is not really a random sample, right? In other words, not random. It's a bad sample. Hmm. So we have a bad sample. That's one way. Okay, what's another issue that could be happening? What's another conclusion we could draw? Well, another thing could just be it happens, right? Weird stuff happens all the time, right? So number two is called a fluke. It's just a weird sample. It's not a bad sample necessarily. It just, you know, things happen, right? By random chance, um, my, the pennies were just old. Right? And that's the key. It's random chance, right? So it is random, but a fluke, you know, weird things happen, right? So you can say weird stuff happens. Okay. Now the probability of that fluke is what we found above. That's the point zero zero seven six found above. And you have to decide Look, and this is where we're heading in chapter 10. Look, you know, if it's biased sample, we can't do anything. So let's just assume we have a random sample. So this one's out, right? Then either it's just a fluke, right? But the probability of that is 0 0.0076. So is that the most likely option? So, okay, well, if it's not a fluke and it's not a biased sample, what else could it be? And there's one other thing. All of this, the whole problem, parts, you know, A through I, A through J, were all predicated on something that was given to you at the start. That the mean was 12.2 and the standard deviation was 9.9. .9. And those are parameters because those are population values, right? So these two suckers right here are population parameters that you're assuming. What if they're wrong, right? Or what if they've changed, right? And that's the third option. So the third option is the parameters you assumed, we assumed, are wrong. And what would that mean? Okay, so the parameters are wrong means that the mean 
which was 12.2, and or, so it could be both of them are wrong, it could be one of them is wrong, the sigma, which was 9.9, .9, both of these were years, are no longer correct, or maybe never were. And that's where we head to in chapter 10. So you start making the decision between these two. You try to decide, hey, you know, maybe it's just a random fluke or maybe no, 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 no. What I assumed to be true is no longer the case. Or maybe they never were. Maybe they were always wrong all along and we never knew it. Those three are the three big um, explanations and conclusions you could draw. So a bad sample, random stuff happens, and the parameters are wrong. The parameters are bad. So, so we could think of it, bad sample, bad stuff happens, and um, parameters are bad. All right, so that's this one. All right. All right. Those are the three options we're going to have to choose from in chapter 10. So this particular example right here is deceptively important because we will be making this big decision between the three of them, particularly the bottom two, a lot in chapter 10 and 11. It's the beginning right there of inferential statistics. <laughs>